Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards. Today we're taking a look at a kit. Now here is the BM65 RGB. This is a kit available from KP Republic. It is a VIA keyboard that has north facing LEDs. And this is what the kit looks like before being assembled. Oh, pardon, that's a steel plate. <laughs> Not aluminum plate. I don't know what I was thinking. So we have a steel plate, a PCB, again, north facing, but for some that isn't an issue. We also have an array of six downward facing LEDs, though the case does not make use of that. And I have not seen a clear case, but maybe I'll have to design me one. So this kit's available, I think, uh, without switches, roughly in the 50 something dollar range. For a lot of people, I think this is a good choice. So without much fanfare, KP Republic released both the Poseidon 60 and Poseidon 65. This is the Poseidon 65, and here we do have an aluminum plate, and as you can see, we also have tabs. Whereas the original kit is a tray mounted, we are looking at an entirely aluminum gasket mounted kit. Now this is a solid chunk of aluminum. It has a nice cutout of the logo or of the name. And it's on the back, so it's not going to be interfering with much of anything. The finish on this is very nice and clean. I mean, I don't see any Besides my, <laughs> my sweat stains, I don't see any blemish whatsoever. It's a beautiful case. It's quite heavy. I wonder what it weighs. 1,100 grams. So it's over a kilo just on its own. This is a hunky piece of aluminum. And we do also have the Allen wrench to open it up as well as what feels like pour-on gaskets and some rubber silicone feet. So today, instead of building out the BM65 RGB, this kit, which, don't get me wrong, I actually quite like this. It's the reason that I had the white kit sitting there, I just hadn't gotten around to building it. This is with Ajax Kiwi stocks in here and with um, Dark Olivia. This is a, uh, it's a, it's a nice little kit. This is an upgrade. Now we do have stabilizers here and they are PCB clip-in stabilizers. I'm not usually a fan of these, but I'll go ahead and give them a shot for this. Now, since this doesn't have a daughter board, but it is gasket mounted, we come to find that we have a very spacious USB-C port opening there so that we know we are going to get, we're not gonna have any issue with having to worry about the USB-C port breaking off because of too much flex. So I'm gonna put this one aside, this is a steel plate, before I put this PCB in. The only modification I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and add some switch pads to it. I've been, I found that pour on switch pads, they're a cheap addition. Um, I prefer it over the PE foam mod. They're both very similar, except the PE foam mod, you're dealing with different thicknesses. And sometimes, you know, if you're dealing with some switches with the softer pin, they can bend, it can cause issues. And it can also like double up and cause it to sound almost like bubble wrap. But with the switch foam pads, they are very uniform and they add, they take away any harshness that there might be and they add just the just enough softness, not a bounce, but a softness to the bottom out. So let me go ahead and load those up real quick. So I installed the uh, switch pads, but while doing that, I realized that 
I had ordered this one as an ISO because I was going to do a black and white ISO ANSI. And uh, the plate that comes with it is, of course, oh, no, this is the plate for this one, but for the kit. So this is an ISO plate. But the plate that I have with Poseidon is an ANSI. So I'm going to have to go in and take this one apart and basically switch everything out. So let me do that. I'll be right back and I'll have a PCB and I can continue on this build. All right. So now I have a regular ANSI to match the plate. This is the BM65 V2. There are two versions for each, the ISO and the regular one. Um, just got to make sure you know which version that's stenciled on the or a watermark on the PCD when looking for the JSON file. So let's go ahead and before we open this up, let's set this aside. I'm going to go ahead and install the gaskets. Now, where should I install them? Should I install the gaskets on the plate or should I install the gaskets? In the case. I think I'm going to install them in the case. So I'll go ahead. Well, let me put the feet on real quick. Because why not? I have a recessed little um, indent. It's, there's a recess in there that allows them to sit nice and snug, which I like that. So they're not off kilter. So I'm going to undo these six screws. They, funny, they're uh, these really flat heads that almost look like the back of a bullet. Alright, we got the six screws out of there. Bolts, I should say. Alright. So, yeah. I think put them here should be a good way to go. I don't see why not. So now we've got the gaskets on. Everything seems to fit fine. I don't see why it should be an issue. And I mean, I haven't seen any, watched any videos on this, so I am flying blind. All right, so before we put this in there, I'm going to go ahead and do it stock for right now with nothing but the, I mean, granted, it does have the the switch pads on here, the porn switch pads, but other than that, we're going to go stock for the first run. So for switches, I'm going to use these Moondrop Tessence Tactile switches. They're a 62 gram heavy, not heavy, medium heavy tactile. So... going to use the switches as anchors so that we can keep the plate in place. Alright, so we've got the plate and PCB assembly built. Let's go ahead and Put it in the case and we do have some flex it's not crazy flex but it's definitely pretty good And here we are with the Poseidon 65 build, or the BM65 RGB version 2 PCB, north facing, via compatible, in a Poseidon 65 case. We can see here how there's flex, and there's plenty of room there to um, for it to move because the USB port is soldered onto the PCB. Uh, I've chosen, uh, these are double shot ABS, Cherry Profile keycaps, 
it's a double set a modern dolch so it has it has several different colorways to choose from so i just picked the random smattering from them to create this one which i i like with the mint touch it just has the switch pads on there um, but i have not done a force break mod and i'd like to do a tempest tape mod as well as add some some sort of filler in there probably go with a polyfill but so let me go ahead and start off by doing a stock sound test and then we'll apply the a few little changes here and there to do a uh, different sound test with a slight different mods it's pretty open to because there's no um daughter board um it's pretty you know just take i wish it only had four bolts but you just take the six bolts off open it up i've actually already got uh the tempest tape cut out and i've got the tape that i'm going to be using for the force break mod and i'm pretty sure i'm just going to go with the polyfill and i'm also deciding if i'm going to add a because uh, i have a 65 percent uh foam pcb plate and i'm considering throwing it in there but I, I think i'm just gonna i'll maybe leave that for another build i'm going to just focus on the bottom of the case so let me go ahead and um, let's do a stock sound test So the first thing I'm going to do is just apply the force break mod and then we'll do a sound test again and see how much difference that makes. All right, so the force break mod is a pretty simple mod but when you're dealing with aluminum cases especially uh, two-piece cases so where the case comes together where the bolts are going through there's going to be a tendency for those to become striking points or points where the sound will reverberate uh, because we are dealing with metal i mean i'm honestly surprised it doesn't ping more because you can hear that ringing is basically happening because it's the top plate striking down at the bottom plate, but it's near those screw holes. So a good way to fix this is to use some, <clears throat> you can either use band-aids. This is kind of like band-aid tape. Uh, it's Luco tape or medical medical tape it's for like bandaging, bandaging up. I like this tape. It's very sticky, but it does a very good job at... Um, muffling the sound because basically we're trying we're going to put a little piece of tape on either side of both the top and the bottom right next to where the bolts are connecting the top and the bottom half let's go ahead and do that now and then we'll see how much difference this makes all right so now we've got the loop type tape or band-aid tape whatever you like to call it um, right around or on either side of the bolt holes for keeping the top and the bottom half together so basically this is going to act as a think of it as a shock absorber and it's going to prevent it from radiating the sound or actually creating any sound that radiates through the case um, now let's see what kind of difference that makes 
And always remember with this case, you want to stick it in USB port first to make sure that there's a port. I also want to make sure, I mean, that none of the tape is going to be interfering or sticking out. The edges, I think we're good here. All right, just from initial impressions, I think it definitely did something to alleviate, but let's go ahead and do a proper sound test. All right, so I hope that the microphone captured the differences. They're not extreme, but I thought they were definitely audible. So I'm going to do one more combo of mods or open it up one more time and do a couple more mods and do a final uh, sound test. So for this one, I'm going to do the Tempest tape mod. I already have a piece cut out, but let's go ahead and take care of the most important part first, which is opening it up. Just three layers of Tempest tape mods that I stole from the previous build. That was my BM65 build. Now it's Poseidon 65 build. All right, so that's one of the things I'm going to do. And the other thing I'm going to do is kind of try to soften up. All right, I have a depth of eight millimeters and. I have this cutting foam that is that's five millimeters. So, all right. I actually like using this here and there. This is a felt. It's a thicker felt, but actually you can see through it a bit. So it's not the thickest felt. But I'm going to use two different materials. Oh, look at that. It's basically the size that I need. Almost. I didn't get in one whole piece, but I got in there. And I'm going to do one more thing. This is thin enough that I don't think it will affect um, the gasket movement at all. One thing that I found that always does a good job of capturing some of the higher tones in metallic aluminum cases is polyfill. And you really don't need that much of it. Cut a little wedge out here for the USB port. Let's go ahead and close it up and see what these two things, well, three technically. Well, I think um, I, I personally am happy. Um, this was a pretty easy build. Uh, I did have to go back and I, I'm probably going to have to replace the spacebar stabilizer. Um, these are 
one of the first set of screw-in stabilizers I bought um, almost two years ago. And I've moved them from board to board. And so they've gone through a little bit of roughness. Um, the wire, I mean, I tried to bend it back into place, but it's still a little bit of out of whack. It's not, mind you, extremely horrible, but you'll notice it's a little bit louder than it should be. But other than that, I'm satisfied with the sound. And as you can see, we still have flex. Is it crazy? No, but it's definitely there. And we have a very, an almost like scale-like uniformity going up across the board. I'm gonna leave you guys with this last final sound test and um, maybe I'll do a super cut between all three um, so that you can hear the difference going between all three. Um, but otherwise, I think it turned out pretty good. Though, if you guys would like to see me do something different or you have any uh, questions or comments, please uh, feel free to ask me in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer as quickly as possible. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that maybe, hey, you learned something new. Uh, and this Poseidon kit, I mean, if you happen to have a BM65, which don't get me wrong, it's a it's a great little kit, and I actually, um, in the process, you know, uh, figuring out that I had an ANSI and ISO, and the only plate that I had for this one was for an ANSI, so I had to switch everything back out. Um, I actually will have a different video on the BM65 as I upgraded it a bit, and um, I think it sounds pretty good as well, but. With this one, we've got the um, the Moondrop Tessence tactile switches and uh, the set, I believe it's Mincaps Young Kui, but it is ABS Double Shot Cherry um, Dolch. It has both light and dark modern Dolch. Um, so it was a set of like 226 keys that were on sale during one of AliExpress's last, um, last blowouts. I think it was the 4th of July, I'm not sure. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on. <laughs>